Welcome to Fashion, Faith, and Flair, and today's faith message is food addiction is a disease. There is hope in Christ. It's no secret that I'm a gratefully recovering food addict living one day at a time on this journey. I have been over 300 pounds, and I've also been a model in my 20s, albeit a plus model. And there is scripture that gives hope when it comes to addiction. So I'd like to read one of those scriptures today. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 13 to 14. In the NIV version, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, will also provide a way out so you can endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. Now, food has been my God since I can remember. And I've always had strange behaviors surrounding food. And I'm not alone in that. There are a lot of people who suffer from this disease and there's no shame in it. For so many years, I was so deeply into it and I was so shameful about it. And I wanted to hide from people. I didn't want them to see me and what the disease had done to me. Um, but I finally got into recovery and I, well, I actually went into recovery for issues surrounding food back in my 20s. I had been in a modeling contest and a year and a half later, I was over 200 pounds. So there's something not right <laughs> about someone that was 155 pounds a year and a half before that and, and modeling in a contest before one of the top agents in the world. And then a year and a half later, I'm 210 pounds walking into a 12-step meeting. But that aside, I chose to go in and out of 12-step recovery. And I had a spiritual experience with God. I became a Christian at 22. I walked into a program of a recovery at age 24. And so I have never been normal when it comes around issues surrounding compulsive food behaviors and uh, overeating, binging, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it's either been let me eat all I can or let me restrict until I didn't restrict anymore. And my body got a lot larger and I lived in denial for many years. And so anyway, I just wanted to go over some things that I went through. Maybe people can relate to that. And then where the hope is in recovery, because with God, all things are possible. So as I said, I've gained and lost hundreds of pounds. I've restricted and binged. I mean, I never did the bulimic thing because um, I just, that wasn't something that I was willing to do to my body, but I was willing to be on crazy starvation diets. I was willing to restrict until, you know, so many days. And then, you know, every, every diet started and ended with a binge. So clearly I had issues. I would eat when I was happy, when I was sad, when I was lonely, when I was hurt, when I was confused, angry, bored, et cetera, et cetera. If a relationship went south with the guy, I was in the food after that. I just had no concept of how to navigate my behavior surrounding food. I mean, I remember when I was four years old, getting out of my bed and going downstairs and getting a sweet treat out of the freezer and eating that. I also remember eating, oh, I'll never forget, I, I overate on a bag of green onion potato chips and getting sick as a child. And then to the, till this day, I've never eaten that food again. I can't, I'm like, oh, heck no. I'm not gonna, not going to eat that. But... 
It, I, you know what? I have lied about my food to myself and others. I've hidden food. I've eaten secretly, eaten, eaten in shame until my disease. I no longer cared if I binged in, in program. And let me tell you a little story about that. <laughs> so about, I guess it was in 2013, I went to Las Vegas with my sister. And we went on a bus trip to Hoover Dam and to see the Grand Canyon. And so we're on this bus with about 20 people were watching movies and halfway through the trip we stopped off at a convenience store and I got all kinds of of snacks and sweet things and I proceeded to eat the entire stash the entire bus trip I didn't care what these people thought I didn't care I was I was going to live you know in my addiction I was going to <laughs> live in the open but that, what that was, was there was no hope. I was resigned, like this is the way life's going to be. So I have a great career, I live in a nice house, and I have this food addiction problem that actually I was in denial. I just didn't want to diet again. And until I hit rock bottom, I had that come to God moment, then I was willing to do something about it. But I felt loads of guilt and shame about my body and my eating. I would wear clothes that were five sizes too big on me and thinking that was going to hide, hide my body. I sincerely promised to make changes, not so much when I was in the depths of the disease, when I, did, I just didn't care anymore and I didn't want to face up to it. But I would all through the years of growing up, I mean, I went on my first diet at age, at age 12, and I would always be like, well, there's always tomorrow, there's always Monday, or, but I still had no concept of what was proper to put inside my body. Now, it comes to, there are certain foods that I have an allergic reaction to, and when I say that, I mean an allergy of the body, and what that means is there are certain items that I know that one it, I, is not going to be enough. I'm not normal when it comes to eating specific foods, especially anything containing sugar. And sugar is highly addictive. And so I know there are certain foods that I cannot eat in. And I have to do a lot of prayer and a lot of meditation and depend on God because I'm powerless over it. Now, people might look at me and say, wow, you really have those issues? And I'm not alone. There are people that have this issue that, that are getting seeking help for it. And believe me, a diet's not the answer. If a diet worked, <laughs> I would've, it would've worked a long time ago. And it's not a thing of willpower either. I do really believe that people Everyone has a gravitational pull towards something. We're, we're physical beings. It may not be food, but it's something. And we can live in denial or we can seek help for it. And for me, that was through 12-step recovery and also having a better relationship with God, who I call Christ because that's my personal relationship. I had a spiritual experience at age 22. Um, for many years, I chose to turn my back on that relationship, and I no longer want to do that. And so I have really cultivated a nice, close relationship with God in the past seven years, and I'm very grateful for that. But that aside, back to the food addiction. It is a disease of isolation. It is the one disease where people will do it by themselves. Um, now, I do remember one time, and I, I <laughs> again, as bad as my disease got, I no longer cared about hiding it. I mean, obviously my body, that was not hiding it. But you hear people say they go to fast food restaurants and they'll go to multiple restaurants or they'll tell people they're ordering for a family because they're shame, ashamed and, and embarrassed. Well, I wasn't embarrassed anymore. And I remember I used to go after work. I worked nights at one point, so I'd get off work. And so it'd be about 10 o'clock at night 
and I would drive through McDonald's and I would supersize it and it got to be it was the same lady at the window and she <laughs> told me one day she goes you come here a lot and I said yes now a lot of people would have been like oh my god I feel so ashamed you know she knows I'm coming here all the time and I didn't care I kept going to the same location but I realized you know at some point in time that fast food was killing me and the older we get as my sister who's a health and wellness person she's a humorous speaker she said the body is less forgiving the, the more decades that we live and so it came to a point where I was able through the grace of God to stop eating that type of food but it was a long road because I was treating the whole idea of giving up fast food again as a diet but let me get back to this so you know there is hope in recovery and as I said before with God all things are possible and I, I just want to offer some hope for people who might be suffering with this disease that don't feel like there's anything else that they can do and one of them is that we only have today it's one day at a time and the main thing in order to keep my recovery is I have to stay in a fit spiritual condition and that means I have to have an open communication with God and that personal relationship it will there'll be interference in that relationship if I use food as an idol and so I have to stay sober in what I eat which is not eating my alcoholic foods and I have to stay in a 12-step recovery and I also have to stay within my church community now some of you might know that 12-step recovery uh, people define their own higher power um, or God or how whatever you want to call it for me that's Christ and so I need both um, groups of people because that's if I don't if I don't have that community of, of, of church believers and if I don't have that community of people who suffer from this same disease then I may as well just <laughs> just go ahead and bury me because it's a slow suicide and people don't take food addiction seriously they they normalize it and I have to remember that it's not normal but there is an answer and that's God so another thing that I have to remember is to listen to God and do his will don't let my own self will get out of control and again that doesn't mean that I'm a weak person it means that where this issue is concerned yes I am very weak and I have to depend on God and so I need to do what he's called me to do one day at a time and that's an open line of communication and that means I can't be in my favorite binge food it's not it's not going to work um, I also have learned to pause pray and proceed and that's a definitely a one day at a time journey because my mouth gets me in a lot of trouble um, it can bless people but it also has a shadow side to it and usually if I pause if I'm having an interaction with someone and I have to pray to God say God is this something that I need to say is this the person I need to say it to and is this the time to say it so that's something I like to remember I have to have a grateful heart and that means making a gratitude list every day I don't want to live in the poor me the self-centered me the the person who was uh, abusing my body with food I want to live in a, uh, a grateful state because my life looks completely different in the past seven years and I'm grateful for it because I'm truly living I'm not allowing life to to go by the wayside while I watch it from a distance I'm actually living it so 
that's really important and part of, of hope in my recovery. The other thing is to continue with a food plan. And I have a plan that has changed over the years. It's not a diet because I can't sit there and keep track of calories. I did it on my phone. I, it's, it's, too, it's too much craziness. It's just a plan that allows me to eat foods that won't trigger that allergy of the body obsession of the mind. And so that's part of my recovery. I have to continue to exercise. I have to move my body and I enjoy it. I love to dance. And for so many years, I was unable to dance. So I want to be able to, to dance. I lift weights. I walk. I need to keep moving because again, the older we get, the body is less forgiving. I want to stay connected with people. For so many years, I was not that connected with other people other than my family and a couple of friends. Um, typically, I'm an extroverted individual and I can talk to anyone. But when I'm in that disease of food addiction, I don't want to talk to anyone. And that's not the way God created me. So I have to stay connected with people. Lastly, what has worked is spiritual, emotional, and physical recovery, because those three things are what keeps me in a balanced life, and they're all three equally important. So in order for me to stay spiritually fit, that means my relationship with God has to be good. Emotionally, that means that I need to accept a lot of things in this world that I cannot change. And then physically, I have to keep this body moving. And I also have to eat foods that will nourish it and sustain life, not live in an anesthetic state. So there is hope in this recovery. And I just hope that some of these words will help someone. If it's one person, then this has been worth it. And I would appreciate any comments of what you've gone through with this particular disease. And if you could like the video, I'd appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, I publish videos twice a week. And so I thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. And I hope that you have a faith-filled day.